Hello, EV Plus Solar viewers. It looks like, unfortunately, today with the rain, we won't be getting much of the solar, but at least the rain's taking care of those unfortunate drought conditions here in California. Right now, I'm at the UC Davis campus. I'm at the Honda house, which you can see next to me. Getting information on the house, they have a nice little visitor center here. Now, this is for any general people who want to get a little bit more information about the house. Hi there. Hello. Um, could you introduce yourselves really quickly for our viewers? Sure. Michael Koenig. I'm the project leader for Honda Smart Home US. Okay. And how did you get involved with this project? Well, our group, the Environmental Business Development Office, was formed at American Honda a few years ago. And uh, my background, actually, I was at the R&D, Research and Development in Ohio. But when I heard about this project, it was green building, it was sustainable, it was renewable energy. I transferred out to Los Angeles to, to run this project. Okay, great. And then the cooperation with UC Davis, how did that come about? Or how was Davis selected as the site for the Honda House? Well, Honda has a pretty long history working with UC Davis yeah. in other areas. And this community is intended to be one of the largest zero net communities in the United States. And so it made a lot of sense for us to locate here. And since the university is controlling this development, it was a natural partnership to work with the university at, at large, but also with their technical centers, the cooling center and the lighting mm -hmm. center. Perfect. So you're going to be giving us a tour of the inside of the house, is that correct? I am. Absolutely. Great. Okay, let's get started. Great. Thanks. Right, go ahead. This project is the Honda Smart Home, which is a vision for how can we as a society get to a future of net zero carbon for everyone. So states like California have targets for 2020 that all new residential construction be zero net energy. And there are, there are barriers to that. There are technical barriers. And so this project was about how can we get there where everybody can have this distributed solar on their roofs, everybody can have the uh, battery electric vehicle in the garage, and how can we do it in a way that, that the electrical grid is not burdened by that? Because those are two great technologies, re really reducing our carbon, but they have potential impact to the electrical grid. And so this project was about how can we get there? And the, the first thing you'll notice is the efficiency. So you can see the lights turning on and off automatically in the house. We really tried to reduce the loads. So electrical loads are down. It's all LED lights, uh, fairly sophisticated controls, which, which really improve the quality of light, really improve the living space, but also are very efficient. The house itself is laid out with an east to west orientation with a lot of glass on the south side. And that glass in the wintertime collects a lot of free heat but it's got these overhangs so that in the summertime, they're completely shaded and we keep the house cool. Uh, in Davis, it gets nice and cool in the evenings during the summertime, so we can pre-cool the house in the summer, save some, some energy there. And I'll show you the, uh, the heating and cooling system here in a minute, but the HVAC system also is very efficient with a lot of neat um, tricks to save energy. So once we get the house loads down, then the question is, how do we get renewable energy? So in this case, we have nine and a half kilowatts of solar power on the roof, which is a little bit more energy really than we need. Um, we've oversized it just a little bit in case in the future we want to add an additional car or do a little bit more work with it. And then we have that solar power coming in to an energy management system out in the garage I'll show you. Energy management system has a bi-directional inverter, stationary storage in a lithium, uh, lithium battery, and that lets us uh, intelligently control when do we produce power, do we push it to the grid, do we store it, do we put it into the car, what's the most beneficial thing we can do with that energy um, from a carbon viewpoint and also from the viewpoint of taking care of the electrical grid. So since we're here in the house, I'll show you some of the interior bits. Uh, everything in the house was chosen from a viewpoint of sustainability because it's not just about energy. It's about water, it's about waste, it's about renewability of materials. We use what's called a compact plumbing design. So the mechanical room is behind that wall. Kitchen sink is here. Both of the upstairs bathrooms are right above it. So we have very, very short hot water runs. So when you turn on the hot water, you don't waste water while waiting for the, the hot water to get there. That hot water that runs down the drain, then we recover some of the energy uh, through a drain heat recovery unit. I'll show you that in a second. And then all of the wastewater that comes out of the house that's gray water, meaning your laundry or your, your, um, your bath water, comes outside and is used to irrigate the plants so we conserve water as much as possible. Um, all of the, 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 the sofas, for example, use a natural latex material and no, um, no uh, fire retardants built into them. 
They're naturally fire retardant. And the thought here is that there's a lot more to being sustainable than just having low energy and having low carbon. Uh, we really need to think about the health of the occupants, the renewability of materials, um, and, and your water consumption. And then here is the mechanical room. So the big black rack here that you see when you walk in is the controller that controls the uh, heating cooling system. It also controls the energy management system and then the other audiovisual controls and whatnot are in, in here. This big white box is the heat pump, which is uh, it's a water to water heat pump, geothermal heat pump. But what's interesting about this is it's a small machine. It's only a two ton machine um, and it will provide the heating and cooling for the house as well as all of the domestic hot water. So the hot water tank doesn't have any backup element. It doesn't have any burners. It's heated from this uh, geothermal uh, heat pump. The heating cooling system runs through the slab. We have 100% radiant heating and cooling through the first floor slab. And also behind the ceiling in the second floor, we have uh, hydronic tubes that run up there. Uh, all of the flow rates, all the temperatures, everything is being recorded continuously. We're recording about 270 data channels uh, at one minute intervals. And we're gonna make all of this data publicly available so anybody who wants to study this type of heat pump in the future, anybody who wants to look at the performance of the walls or the performance of um, you know, the, the heat through the concrete, how much water the occupants are using, all of that data will be available. We're collecting, uh, this is the potable water for the house. Every hot and cold water run is a home run, and then they each have their own individual water meters. So we're able to see how much water is going to what fixture, what's the temperature of water, how much energy is in that water. In the back corner is the drain heat recovery that I said. As the, the hot shower water comes down, it naturally clings to the outside of the pipe, and then the incoming cold city water wraps around the outside of it. It pulls the heat out of it before it uh, comes into the hot water tank to be reheated. All the lights have, uh, have a warmer tone to them, and depending on the time of day, as you walk into the rooms, you'll have different scenes to, to really improve the quality of life. So if you walk into the kitchen at 8 o'clock at night, you'll have just a low level of lighting. It's nice to get a glass of wine. If you walk in there at 6 o'clock at night, all the lights will come on so you can make dinner. I'm going to go upstairs. So here we are upstairs. The, um, the upstairs has a, a little study area and two bedrooms. Uh, all of the house has automatic window shades that uh, wake up with the house in the morning. These are the west facing windows and so these will automatically drop at uh, noon so that we can prevent some of the west, western sun from overheating the house in the, in the summertime. Uh, but then they'll automatically go back up at uh, sunset because you can't see it today but there's actually a beautiful set of mountains out there and at sunset it's a really nice view so these will automatically come back up at sunset. And the whole house will go to bed um, when the sun goes down for, for privacy. All the shades will come back down. All the windows are triple pane glass. The walls are nine and a quarter inch deep. They're double stud construction, so we don't have any thermal bridging. Everything's full packed with cellulose, uh, R31 in the walls, and R60 for the ceiling. Uh, part of the strategy for the heating cooling system is that we use a very small machine that can slowly put heat in or out of the space. But if you come home and you're hot and you're sweaty in the middle of summer, the only way you can get relief is if you turn on the fans. And so we've put ceiling fans in all the rooms. It lets us move the heat um, in and out of our radiant panels a little bit more efficiently. And it can give the, the occupant an immediate sense of cooling if they come home and they're hot. So this is the all electric Fit EV. It's a, a 20 kilowatt hour electric battery. It um, doesn't have any internal combustion engine. It's electric only. We've modified this vehicle to have a DC charger. So the idea is when you come home, you'll plug in, and if the sun's shining, we'll automatically take that energy straight from the solar panels through the DC connection into the car. DC is direct current. And the reason you do that is because your normal household outlets are AC, they're alternating current. The solar panels make direct current, the battery in the car uses direct current, the battery in our energy management system uses direct current. So we try to keep it as DC as much as possible because converting between AC and DC loses quite a bit of energy. So here behind me is the energy management system. The left side is a 10 kilowatt bi-directional inverter. Uh, it's got the DC car charger is built into it and the controls for the uh, solar panels on the roof and the uh, stationary battery. So the glass front cabinet is a 10 kilowatt hour, 10 kilowatt uh, lithium titanate battery. 
And the, the concept is, how can we use the solar energy as efficiently as possible? So if you're away during the day and the sun's shining, we can take that energy and store it in the battery. And then when you come home at night, we can charge the car directly from the battery. And again, we can avoid AC-DC conversion losses. But we can also use the battery to help shift the loads. So if the, the grid during the day might be using very carbon intensive power plants. And so if that's the case, then we don't want to consume energy from the grid during the day. We can shift our consumption to the evening time. We can use energy from the battery during the day. Um, or if you want, need to charge the car, for example, a day like today is rainy. Maybe I don't make enough solar power to charge the car today. If I need to charge the car from the grid, I can pick the time that's most beneficial. I can look online and figure out when's the low carbon time, and I can charge the car from AC during the lowest carbon time. So thanks to Michael for that great tour. Here we are now by the backyard. Um, as you can see, it's a very drought-tolerant landscape, only a few plants.